Uh-huh, I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only, Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. <laughs> Tickling me this morning. Steve Harvey got a radio show. Filled with nothing but joy and hope about it, too. You know, it's a great thing to be able to wake up in the morning with, with peace in your heart and joy. Peace and joy is 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 immeasurable. It, it has a value attached to it, and, and I have no idea what it is. It's invaluable. It is worth so much more than than any amount of money you can make. Peace and joy. I I have not always had that. I have not always been a peaceful person, or or a person who lived his life um, in in a joyous spirit. It took an arrival at this moment. Some people arrive sooner than others. Um, I wish I had arrived at this point sooner, but I think it was necessary for me to learn a few things too. That's, that's the amazing thing I've learned about life is that instead of reflecting on your past uh, uh, incidences and calling them failures, instead of focusing on the negative and, and calling them bad times, um, I look at them now as experiences. I had to have those experiences that were negative, that were good, positive, wrong, evil. I had to have all those experiences to become, to shape who we are today. We all have to have them. If you look back at all the negative experiences you've had, all the things that you called failures, all the businesses I started that went under, all of the jobs I had that I was fired from, all the shows that were canceled, all of the times I I thought I was going to get something happening my way and turned out I didn't get it at all. When you look at all of it, all of it, hopefully along the way, what you have done as a person is you've taken those negatives and those failures and you've used them for what they actually are. They are experiences. And they've now created in you an experienced person. And you know, uh, that is worth something. That's then it becomes a positive. But what too many people do is they let the negative things that have happened in their life, they allow the failures that have happened in them lives never to manifest themselves as experiences. And you sit up there and you dwell on it and you dwell on it until you have this woe is me attitude. Stop looking at it like that, y'all. You go through things in order to become the person that you are today. I tell you who you sometimes have to sit down and talk to. Sometimes you ought to sit down to an inmate that really gets it. An inmate that says, man, I, I've actually heard inmates say it to me and write to me. And, and, and they've said things like, man, Coming to prison saved my life. Now, those of you who have never got how can he say a thing like that? But 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 some men know, man, I was so far out there that if I'd have stayed out there, I wouldn't even be here today. This actually allowed me to stop, spend some time with myself and learn some things about me. Now, does that happen for everybody like that? No. But here's a person who has taken an experience that could be considered a failure or a negative and turning it into a positive and using it to enrich their lives. You can do it no matter what your set of circumstances is. I recommend to everybody that you try changing your outlook in order to change your outcome. Everything that happens to you that's negative or you consider a failure, they're experiences. You've got to go through these things in order to have the knowledge that you have today. So I wish that I had come to this arrival that I'm in now, this place of peace and joy. But then guess what? I would not know what I know. I could not share some of the things that I'm able to share if I had not gone through some of them. And sometimes that's the purpose of them is to teach you a lesson because, you know, God has a plan for you. He really, really does. And eventually he can use you no matter how old you are. And he can use you no matter how young you are. If you just say, okay, I'm ready to hear your plan. I've tried mine. Mine ain't worked out. What's your plan for me, God? What do you want me to do? That's why I say every day, Steve, I've got a radio show, y'all. Because, man, I ain't see it coming. I didn't see that coming. I ain't see this book coming. I ain't seen. I ain't seen half of the amazing things that have happened to me. I didn't plan them. 
I was sitting there, man, asking God for some direction. And then I got smart enough to stay watchful, be a hard worker now, because faith without works is dead. And it came. And I'll remind you of this. God has given all of you a gift. Every last one of you listening has a gift. God has never created a soul that he did not provide a gift to. God gives everyone a gift. And a gift is not just singing, rapping, entertainment. The richer gifts are much more than that. Teachers are gifted people who really have the gift of sharing information. That's a gift. You know, um, and in that you can become great. You know, uh, a lot of people think that successful and greatness is the same thing. Cornell West said it at my daughter's graduation. He was a spokesperson. He said something so pointed. He said, don't ever confuse success with greatness. The two have nothing to do with each other. See, people determine success about money and fame and all this here. But greatness, greatness ain't got nothing to do with your money. It ain't got nothing to do with your fame. It's how you conduct your life. It's how meaningful and significant you become in your community, at your church, on your job, to the Cub Scout unit that you run, to the little girls' lives that you change, that that little center in the hood where you just one place of hope to so many people and they come back. And I used the example of Lou Danzler who passed away in L.A., who had the Boys and Girls Challenges Club out in L.A., and he wasn't a rich man at all. If you walk by him, you wouldn't even know who he was. But if you look at all the people who have gone on to become politicians, who have gone on to become CEOs, who have gone on to become athletes that have passed through this man's small building in the hood in L.A., he was great. Trust me, man, prayer changes things. I say it all the time. But when you see people become successful or great, there's somebody praying somewhere. May not even be them. Maybe it's their mama. You know, I think of Tiger Woods and all the greatness he's accomplished. You know, they, they always talk about his father and all this here. Somebody somewhere praying for Tiger Woods. I got cash money riding on that. Tiger Woods' mama is a praying woman or something. My mother was. She prayed me into this place because she used to call me all the time praying for you, boy. And prayer changes things. It really does. Try it today. It can change you. It has changed millions of people. Open up yourself to the greatness that's in you because God has given you a gift. Now, the fact that you ain't using it, who fault you think that is? I'm just telling you you got one. And if you start praying about it, it'll manifest itself. And you can become one of two things, successful or great, or both. You can make the decision today. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it is here another great day. And we start this day. We are involved in a friendship with Roscoe Wallace, helping him bring down one of the largest industries in the world, the entire music industry. Roscoe Wallace is involved in a $3 trillion lawsuit against the entire industry for every hit that he has ever written and never received royalties, publishing rights, or any funds at all. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is with another hit. <laughs> I got him, baby. That one thing you say when you say rock gonna come ready to hit. Here I go. Here we go. Ready on that one. Uh. Ooh. Eh. Do you remember when we fell in love? We was young and innocent dead. Do you remember ha, how we used to be? All it happened way back when. Uh, do you remember? <laughs> we was on the phone. On and on and on. Ha, do you remember? Ha, I said, do you remember the time? No, you don't, huh? Fell in love. Do you remember the time when? When we first met, girl, remember time? Oh, Lord. Hey, Roscoe. They can't remember because they stole the song from huh. me. Sing it, Roscoe. You remember, Roscoe? Go. You remember, don't you, Roscoe? Boy, yeah. I know hell. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Mm. I remember that. I knew all that. Holy, 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 holy. 
<laughs> oh, stop. With the get it, get it. Hold up. Wait a minute. Who did I hear you say wrote Remember Time? Michael Jackson, Teddy Riley. Teddy Riley was one of right the Right there. Right yeah. there. Yeah. See, that's where you are. You ain't listening. See, you listening. I wrote Remember the Time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. They tried to get cute. Oh. Talking about some damn do you remember. <laughs> That's where the damn lawsuit come in at right they there. They changed the hook. <laughs> changed the hook, took my balls. <laughs> All right, remember. Roscoe, you, thank who, who you. Say, who talk like that? Good luck in your lawsuit coming up at 32 minutes after the hour. We're going to start the show off with Nephew Tommy's Run That Prank Back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time to start the morning off with Run That Prank Back from the Nephew. What you got, Neff? Uh, you're not going to like me on this one, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because it's in my heart, it's in my soul to crush uh-huh. you, prank you, and then bring you back where you need to be all at the same time. This right here is Relationship. Departure, relationship, departure. Okay, everybody buckle up. Don't be mad at me. Just listen. I make him love her more. That's what I do. I make him love her more. Let's go, cat dog. Hello? Hey, Brian. Hey, baby. Yeah, what's up? I was, um, I was calling to tell you, <sighs> baby, look, I just, I, I just can't do I this anymore. I got it, I got it. Huh? What, what? Were Hello? You, were you- uh, oh, hello? Brian. Hey, uh, Brian. Hey, this is Greg. I know, I know you was just talking to Val, but this is this is Greg talking to you. It's Brian, right? Greg who? Greg who? Yeah, this is Brian. Greg, I was just talking to my wife. Uh, could you put her back on the phone? Uh, no, I'm not going to I'm not gonna be able to do that. So, why, hey, why can't you do that, man? Hey, let me explain something to you. Uh, explain? All right, there's some things, you know, Long conversations about this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How you know my wife on a first-name basis like that, man? How you? Who are you? Like I said, man, my name is Greg. Uh, okay. All right, at the airport. Okay. At what, airport? At, 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 which airport? And why are you, what, what are you at the airport with my wife for? Hey, let me... What, what, hey, what, hey, what? hey, hey, dog. All of this is complicated, okay? It's real... Yeah, complicated. it is. Yeah, make it simple for me. Okay. So what I want to explain to you... <laughs> What I, let me explain to you, man. Nine, we've had a lot of long conversations about this. It's something that she. What? When? When was this? Why, why are you at the airport with my wife? Is with me. And why? Is leaving with me. Okay. What? what, what leaving? And y'all, what do you mean leaving? Leaving me? But, oh hell no! Put her on the phone. Hey, I don't even want to talk to you, man. Put her on the phone. Put her on the phone, man. Look, you need to put her on the phone right now. Leaving. I don't believe that, man. I want to hear her say that. You want to talk to me? I don't hear you, saying. Yeah, look, yeah, let me talk to my wife, man, because you, 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 baby, you about baby. to make it. Yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's up? What's this dude talking calm about? Calm down, sweetie. Calm, 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 calm down. I've been for trying nothing, to tell yeah. you this for a while. See, you think everything's okay, but it hasn't been okay. <laughs> Why are you telling me this over the phone? Why can't you just come home and I tell me this to my face, baby? Why can't you just tell me this to my face? Hey, 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 bro. Come on, man. <laughs> no, man. Why are you on, man? I'm just talking to my wife, man. What the <laughs> Hey, 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 bro. I, 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 I know this is painful, man. No, you don't know. You don't know nothing, Hey, bro, right? I know this is painful. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe this. I just put my wife on the phone, please. Please, if you if you got any ounce of a man in you, just put my wife back on the phone. All right, I, 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 all right bro. Let me let me let me say. Let me, let me. Can I say something to you, man? What you got to say, man? What you? It's less than my wife on the phone, but you ain't got nothing I'm to tell a, me. I'm gonna put her on in a second, but let me say this to you, man. Say, say it, man, and wrap it up, all right? Because I need to talk to my wife. I just want you to know this, Brian. This is let me know something. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Tommy. M- Got me to prank phone call you. you what you? Hold on. So, so okay. If you pranking me, what's up with the airport and stuff in the back then? Y'all at the airport? No, nah, bro. Your what? wife is here at the studio, man. Ain't nothing happening, man. Your wife. Hold on. I'm gonna let you talk man. to her. Huh? Yeah, yeah. You all right? First of oh, all, are you all right? Man, uh. <laughs> 
Oh, man. Uh, it was about to be a murder scene, man. <laughs> Look at me oh. now. Now, now who's the big okay. prankster, huh? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Finally. You, you could have been a little bit more oh, subtle so than this. I mean, <laughs> ooh. You and, your, you and your brother, you think y'all the only ones can prank people. So you and your brother be pranking all the time, man. Boy, man, it's, it's light stuff, though. I ain't, girl, <laughs> you ain't... Oh, oh geez, and happy birthday, got, baby. Hey. Oh, you got a birthday oh, coming up? <laughs> happy birthday, Brian. This, this, yeah, man, it's a great gift. Great <laughs> gift, man. But let me talk to my wife, man. All yeah, right, just, I, I, got, I ain't got nothing to do with your wife. Hold on. Please. Be what? You, woman, you got me, all right? Don't, don't, you ain't got to go this far, all right? You ain't got to go this far every time. It's supposed to be funny. I did feel a little bad when you kind of started tearing up, but I'm glad to know you fight for me like that. Uh -oh. yeah. Fight? It was going to be some fight. It wasn't going to be a fight. Oh, girl, just, a hey, bring your black home. I'm coming, baby. Don't even stop at red light. Take <laughs> don't stop track. at red light. <laughs> See how I did that? See how I did that? It hurt. Yeah. That it hurt, hurt Brian. You hurt It hurt Brian. Brian a lot. And I get it. Yeah. It you hurt. Know the show, you know the show you got, Tommy. Got ready to love? Yeah, you know, now I'm going to have a new episode. Oh. <laughs> What's, What's that going to be called? called? It's going to be ready to get your ass whipped. <laughs> yeah. and, and, um, it's going to look a lot like cheetahs because the camera going to be <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I might have got to do it, to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it forces yeah. you to love your baby a little stronger. You know what I mean? You, you that was cherish too far. it a little more. Too far. It was. <laughs> This is still, uh, y'all don't know what he's doing lately, but this is still an offshoot of praise and worship yeah. service. Is this oh, what this was? Oh, yeah, oh my I God, my bad, excuse it. me. Mm, mm, oh, I'm sorry. Um, as we were, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'll be in Dayton, Ohio this weekend, okay, <laughs> Saturday night. Mm. Uh, tickets are on sale right now. I'm at the convention center. It's Nephew Tommy and Friends comedy show. You don't want to miss it. And, um, you know, uh, as we move forward to the holidays, uh you know, we're going to do bigger things as well. So get ready for that. Nephew Tommy will be with um, Cedric the Entertainer, um, Eddie Griffith, uh, Earthquake, uh, D.L. Hughley. <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, you know, go to my website, thomasmiles.com. All of my dates are there. We won't talk about the prank anymore. We don't want to, you know, the haters are in the building. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> All right. Thank you, nephew. Uh, coming up next, it is Ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, the U.S. Surgeon General will be our very special guest. He's going to talk about COVID-19 vaccinations, booster shots, children's vaccinations. Get the facts at the top of the hour with the U.S. Surgeon General, Dr. Vivek Murthy. And we will let you know. We will keep you informed. But right now, it is time for Steve's favorite segment, Ask the CLO. All right, Steve, here we go. This one is from Lisa in Beaumont, Texas. Lisa says, my husband is a great man and he's good on the grill, but he sucks at cooking anything besides barbecue. I'm tired of him wasting good food and making concoctions that I'm afraid to eat. <laughs> the sniffles and... Uh, he made chicken soup, chicken noodle soup, and uh, he had some of everything in that soup. I was chewing corn, okra, bacon bits, and other <laughs> stuff, and it tasted like tortilla soup, but with noodles. Today, he grilled lamb chops and finished them in the microwave. They were tough as leather. <laughs> How do I stop this <laughs> mess? <laughs> See, if you good on the grill, dog, stay on the grill. So I don't come in the house cooking. I really don't. I do what I do. You want lamb chops? You want steaks? You want ribs? You want kielbasa? You want chicken? You want fish? If I'm outside in my outdoor kitchen, I'm king out there. Mm -hmm. I don't come in the house. It ain't what I do. Marjorie can cook everything and grill. That's bad girl. And I ain't just bragging. I'm this girl, country girl, she can really cook. Mm -hmm. I, I ain't that good in the kitchen with all this stuff. I make my eggs and go sit on, sit my ass down. But now you come outside on that grill, I can't say this to her. 
She can't hold a candle to me out there on that damn grill. Oh. She no, hell no. Why you whispering? Yeah, you think she gonna walk in? <laughs> you don't think she gonna hear this? <laughs> uh-uh. Uh-uh. She, 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 she does listen. Show. Thank you. Yeah, mm, that's what you be telling me. Uh-huh. Listen to what you saying, fool. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's why I'm whispering, Tommy. <laughs> she ain't gonna hear this part right here. She, ain't gonna, she not gonna hear this part right here. She not gonna hear this part right here. Okay. Okay. So this is stay your ass on the grill, Tom. All right, moving on. Uh, Nina in Tallahassee says, "I've been with my boyfriend for almost four years. He's 27, and he has a great job working with older black men that he looks up to. He started smoking cigars and he drinks alcohol more often." What's really shocking is all of the new stuff he's doing in the bedroom and the new brand of condoms he uses now. He told me that the old men give great advice and put him up on game. Is it the old men's advice or a new woman's? Mm-hmm. No, it's it's the old men advice. I mean, look at what he's doing. Ain't no woman coming in here telling me, you ought to try this new brand of condom. That's old dude conversation. Mm-hmm. That's old dude. He telling you the truth. Them cigars, that liquor, he getting that from an old dude. You ain't got nothing to worry about. What you what you trying to make something up for? Perfectly Enjoy legit, the bedroom. what he said. Damn. Man, got great advice. Well, what you in there? Oh, you ain't, oh, oh, oh I see what you doing. Oh, you ain't, oh, 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 oh I see. What? Oh, you don't know the hill move. Yeah. I call Come this on. the Willie Coochie. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never tried the Willie Coochie, huh? What? Boy, sit down over there. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Boy, you put that Willie Coochie on him. <laughs> Boy, I'm trying to tell you something now. That, that Willie Coochie have him come back more. <laughs> and then, and then he tell me, and then young boy sitting there going, "Wow, man, these cats know." Cause old dudes know something. That's how the old dudes turn boys into men. Experience. Take advantage of this. Enjoy yourself. All right. Yeah. Moving on to Claire in Indiana. Claire writes, "I was dating a guy for a short period of time." And it made me feel like some kind of nasty woman because of my sexual preferences. I am abstaining from intercourse now, but I absolutely love providing a little oral situation for a man if it gets to that point. My ex got hooked up almost daily, but he said it wasn't enough and he needed a better connection with me. I feel bad for even trying to please him. Should I abstain from that too? Wow. Claire. I daily. I ain't trying to Ooh, be in your that's business. That's the raw CLO. But <laughs> seeing as how you know, I don't really know, you know, if I, 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 ain't, got nothing to, I ain't got nothing to base it on. You know, I can't say. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you want me to say to you later. I, I got nothing against it, but I'm, I don't know how you want me to tell you to go about it. I don't know. You know, maybe, you know, maybe you ain't what you think he is. You know, you know, you got to reconsider maybe. I don't. Well, next question, Shirley. Let's go. Yeah, let's move on. All right. Trinity in Milwaukee says six months ago, I got a mommy makeover and I'm building up my self confidence again. My husband and I are in our mid 40s, but my husband acts like an old man. I dress in more trendy outfits to show off my flat tummy for the first time in many years, and he can't stand it. He said I need to dress more tastefully. I told him he needs a makeover so we can both be fly. <laughs> he got mad and won't speak to me. He can dish it, but he can't take it. How How is this? All he does is critique me. Should I apologize? <sighs> how can he dish it and can't take it? Male ego is so damn fragile. Mm-hmm. But if he going to dish it, got to be able to take it. If you living in a glass house, don't throw no stones. Mm-hmm. Temptations. Now, I know that ain't temptation didn't write that, but they got a hell of a song. If you living in a glass house, <laughs> don't throw no stones. Come on, what? If you living in a glass house, don't throw no stones. Are you answering her? No, you, you, he got to be able to take it. Keep wearing your outfits, girl. Stay fly. Fly till you die. He act old. Don't they all? A lot of dudes just letting it come get him. I'm not doing that. So congratulations for looking fly. He mad, a little bit jealous. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. 
but go and keep playing right. But you got to tell your man. Your man can't give you constructive criticism and you not be allowed to give him constructive, constructive criticism. Right. Now, I know what a mommy makeover is, but I've, I haven't really heard of guys getting makeovers. Well, it, here it is. You know, fellas, mm-hmm. you get up in age, hair growing places, in your nostrils, in your ear. Buy that little thing at Target, the little tweezer thing that shave you, and right. run that thing in your nostrils. Quit letting hair grow in your damn nostrils. I'm looking up your nose and see all this gray hair. Get that out of there. Okay. You're too, shave them bushes down out your ears. It just make you look old. Uh-huh. Now look, man, here's another thing you could do. I do it for TV for my brand. I use just for me and on my mustache because I got a brand. But okay. you don't have to do that. You don't have to, but if your gray ain't coming in right and you got two, three strands and it always look like you got something on your face, uh-huh. get your ass, a little bit of just for men, and just touch it. That's all, dog, until you get a little more gray because it look bad when it's gray every three inches because now it look like you got stuff on your face. What about just that some brown little stuff gold gray? That's all a right. different Great kind. Great advice. Great advice, CLO. <laughs> Coming up at the top that. of the hour, the Surgeon General of the United States. We'll talk about COVID-19 vaccinations, all of that, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, our distinguished guest this morning, everybody, is the 21st Surgeon uh, General of the United States. And he's joining us because we want to discuss the new developments in the COVID uh, pandemic and whether or not we should be concerned about a spike in COVID cases over the holidays. And we're happy to have him join us because we have questions. So let's get to it. Please welcome to the show, Dr. Vivek Murthy. Is it Vivek? Did I get that right? You're close. It's Vivek. Like it rhymes with Lake. Oh, oh, Vivek. (laughs) <laughs> hey, man, we're uh, happy to have you back, man. Uh, and tell your five-year-old son, uh, Uncle Steve said hello. <laughs> oh, I will tell him. He's looking at me right now. About Uncle All right, Steve. good, <laughs> man. Hey, hey, sir, so tell us, man, where do we stand right now in the COVID pandemic? Are things getting better? So I'm glad you asked. Because so, uh, we've been at this for about 22 months now uh, going on. And I know folks are tired. and But we have come a long way. And, and I want know why so if you compare now to where we were last year last year we didn't even have vaccine but now we've got over 190 million people who are fully vaccinated that means that 190 million people whose chances of ending up in the hospital or dying from covid are dramatically lower uh, than those who are not vaccinated that's a good thing we also have two oral medications that could be taken by mouth that are on the horizon. They haven't been approved yet or authorized by the FDA, uh, but they're in the process, in the pipeline, if you will, and the early results have been promising. So that's good news as well. And the other big thing is that our kids are back in school. And you know, I say that as a dad who's got two kids who were home with me the entire pandemic uh, last year, and now they're back in school like millions of other kids. So that, that's a good thing for our children, for their health and their learning. But we're not out of the woods yet. You know, we are, we've hey. come down certainly from the peak of cases that we had with the Delta wave, but we still have about between 75 to 80,000 cases a day uh, that we're finding. And the cases in the, especially in colder weather regions where people are going indoors are starting to tick up. So that means we've still got to be vigilant. We still have to get vaccinated if we're not. If you are eligible to get boosted, you absolutely should, because that'll help protect you during this winter. Hey, let me ask you a question about something you just spoke about, this oral medicine. Is that a form of vaccine or is that something to fight the symptoms of COVID? Yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up. So the oral medicines are there to help you if you get COVID. They don't prevent COVID. It's not something you take uh, just to save it off. But the other important thing to know about the oral medicines is, you know, one of them has shown that it, it reduces your chances of of ending up in the hospital dying by 50%. Another, well, the other medicine showed that it reduced those chances by 89%. That's really good. But there's a 100% way to reduce your chance of getting in the hospital or dying from COVID. And that's not getting COVID in the first place. And that's why getting the vaccine is so important. Taking these precautions is so important. We would rather people prevent the illness than get it. Hey, before we get into this about the children, let me ask you a question. What do you say to people who still don't want to get vaccinated because they say they don't have enough information and they think something's in it that hurt, that's harmful. 
What I'd say to all those who have questions is, you know, I get why your questions are important to answer, and I, and I get why you might have them. But I'm also worried that there's a lot of misinformation circulating uh, on social media and other channels that's leading people to worry about side effects that aren't real. Uh, for example, we know that there are a lot of folks out there who are worried that the vaccine may cause infertility or that it may cause mutations in your DNA. Uh, or that it may cause COVID itself. None of those are true. We've seen those rumors. They've been kicked up on social media, but they're not true at all. They're not based in science. Well, here's what we do know. And keep in mind, it's not just a couple people who've gotten this vaccine now. We've administered more than 425 million doses of the vaccine in the United States alone and billions of doses around the world. And what we've learned are two really important things. One is that the vaccine is really effective at preventing the worst outcomes from COVID. It will save your life. And the second thing we've learned is that the vaccine has a remarkably strong safety profile. You know, as a doctor, I've prescribed many vaccines over the years, uh, you know, to to adults or kids. Certainly my kids and other kids get many vaccines, you know, as they grow up. But, you know, overall, as far as vaccines go, this is one of the most uh, safe and effective vaccines, uh, you know, that we've got out there. So I want people to know that. And and please, you know, talk to your doctor if you have a doctor, you know, to understand more about the vaccine, if you've got questions or, you know, talk to another credible source, your local health department, your local children's hospital. But don't don't trust the random articles that you might see floating around on the Internet because they're not always true. Let's talk about the vaccination for uh, kids, for children specifically, age five and up. Why is that important for eligible children to get vaccinated? Uh, this is a really important moment. Uh, it's a landmark, really, moment in our fight against COVID. Finally, we've got a vaccine for kids 5 through 11. You know, I, my, one of my kids is in that range. He's five. Uh, uh, he's lying right, right next to me at this moment as I'm talking to you. He's holding my hand, looking at me. And, uh, and you know, I, I love him to death and would do anything for him. And that's how all parents are about their kids. They want to really ultimately look out for the best, for the health of their children. Number one. In the studies that were done with thousands of children, the clinical trials, they showed that this vaccine worked really well. It was more than 91% effective, or around 91% in terms of its efficacy in preventing symptomatic COVID. The second thing, though, is the safety profile was really good. The side effects that kids primarily had were a sore arm, uh, you know, fatigue, a headache, a fever that lasted maybe a day or two. And then they were left with protection against the vaccine. That is a really big deal. And especially as you know, winter is, is coming, it's here in many parts of the country already, the virus is easier to transmit when there's cold, dry air. And, you know, we know people are getting together in indoor settings. Families want to get together for the holidays. So getting your child vaccinated is a way to reduce their risk uh, during yeah. this winter yeah. season. And if you do it actually this week, uh, you'll be able to get your child fully vaccinated in time for Christmas. Yeah. Hey, well, listen, stay right there, Doc. We're going to come right back. We'll be right back with more with the Surgeon General right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, everybody, we're back. And our special guest this morning is the 21st uh, Surgeon General of the United States, uh, Dr. Vivek (laughs) Murthy. Uh, And once again, for those of you that don't like the pronunciation (laughs) of his name coming from me, it is because my... Slovenian uh, accents are not <laughs> up to what it's supposed to be. I'm covering all the bases. Any Eastern Europe uh, thing you want to cover, I'll do that. But this this brother right here is fantastic. Hey, we were talking about when we left, we were talking about the pandemic is getting better. Uh, mm. There's been some improvement. Over 190-some million people in this country have been fully vaccinated. That's a great step. Well, you know something, doctor, I think this was important to hear from you, from our Surgeon General. I know it's people out there still got they, but like you say, if you get your information from credible sources, that could help you. Please, everybody, get off the Internet and talk to your doctors, talk to your medical uh, professionals who do this for a living, who are basing this around science. So, and, and that'll help us all. You know, I really appreciate this because people want to know about their kids. There's a vaccination out there available for kids between 5 and 11, 91% effective rate. We've had over 190 some million people vaccinated fully in this country. We're on our way to getting our hands around this thing. If we could get everybody to participate and stop lying. But I what? also am fully vaccinated. <laughs> 
Absolutely, Stephen. If I could say one last thing to you yes, and the, the folks who are listening, that last point you raised about making sure you're getting information from the right sources is absolutely important. You know, I, I wouldn't ask my electrician for medical advice, and I certainly wouldn't ask my doctor <laughs> for advice on my electrical system in my house. But uh, so if you've got if you've got a relative out there who's trying to tell you what you should and shouldn't do about the vaccine and they're they've got misinformation there just remember you know you can love your relatives but you know it doesn't mean you got to trust everything that's coming from them and unfortunately we do have well-intentioned family members in my family too uh who are sending messages out over text threads and emails and on social media because they, they think they're trying to warn their family but actually the information may not be accurate yeah. so yeah. uh you know don't i don't blame people you know for necessarily for inadvertently spreading this but just remember before you click share you know, on an article on social media, just ask yourself, is it really coming for a credible source? Do I know? And if you're not sure, don't share. We put out a community toolkit for people to understand a little bit more about how to identify misinformation when it's out there, how to talk to family members about that. People can find that at surgeongeneral.gov. But bottom line is we want you to be safe. We want you to have accurate information to protect your health and your family. And the vaccine is one powerful step toward protecting all of us from COVID. Absolutely. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, our Surgeon General of the United States. Thank you for calling, sir. Thanks so much, Steve. Good to talk to you as always. You take All care. right, my brother. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. The Steve Harvey Morning Show is here to give you only the facts, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Now, coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, we're going to check out Steve's voicemail right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, it is time now to check your voicemail, 877-29-STEVE. We have a message from Brock in D.C. Hey, good morning, Steve Harvey in the morning show. I listen to y'all every morning. This is Brock calling out of D.C. I listen to y'all when I get up on my way to work until y'all go off. I love y'all show, especially that crazy nephew, Tommy. I live. I look forward to them prank calls every morning and Shirley Strawberry Letters. I just want to say, man, I love the show. Always going to love it. God bless all of y'all and keep doing what you're doing. That's love, Brock. Right. Wow. Thank you, Brock. All right, Brock out of D.C. from my one I had at station, 96.3 WHUR. Almighty. Yeah. Up in there, one of the coldest stations in the country. How would Thank y'all for listening. All right, this next message is about 96.3. Nephew Tommy. Is it 96.3? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. I didn't say it enough times. Lord. <laughs> Go Over ahead. Over the years. Huh? Listen, Steve. That is not true. Nephew Tommy is a fine, sexy bald head man. And I just called to let y'all know that. Don't do my timing like that, okay? And this is Lee Andrea checking all the way in from Jacksonville, Florida, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Thank you, uh, baby girl. Thank you, first baby. of all, I'm humble. Just Thank based you. on humble. the name Leandro, mm-hmm. we're dealing with a certain age group. So once a person is uh, old, you know, her vision is impaired. They oh, what they used to she be. didn't sound old. She they go ahead. Sounded uh, Leandro. She didn't sound <laughs> what? old, though. Wait, 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 wait. Lee Andrew? Wait, let's hear it again, Steve. Let's <laughs> hear it again. Voice. Listen, Steve. That right is there, not true. right there. Who starts that? Stop, stop, stop. Who starts a conversation? Listen, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Who you like know? That. Listen, Steve. <laughs> Who on is this? <laughs> y'all stop talking me. See, I listen real well. Y'all didn't yeah. hear that. She didn't sound old. Oh, start the tape again, Dave. Listen, Let, Steve. That right, is stop. Not- that is not. And then, then they try to pick it up when they they go old. Then they try to sound young. Listen, Steve. Listen, that is Steve. not sexy ball head me. Sassy. Who? What the hell is sassy? Sassy. Sassy. <laughs> sassy. <laughs> sassy. You're not gonna dissect her speech like that. I'm just telling you, S E S S Y. You ain't sexy, Tommy. You sassy. <laughs> sassy ball head man. You gonna leave my Tommy alone. I know, right. I know she, I, be, I know her daddy old. I know her. I, I know her daddy old. Uh, Cause her name Leandra. Her daddy name is Lee. <laughs> that tells you something right now. And her mama name is what? Deandre. Deandre. Oh, oh, it could be her daddy name Andre and her mama name Lee. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm just telling. You. Well, the bottom um, line is, she said Tommy was a sexy ball headed. She man. said Tommy was sexy. 
Y'all got to start listening, <laughs> but man. But you know what she meant. I, I mm-hmm. sure do. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. Next so, message. Thank you, baby girl. <laughs> she, yeah, she showed you some love, Tommy. Right? Yeah. Thank you, thank Ooh. you. Nine million people listen to this One. <laughs> <laughs> One damn but we call. Haven't, he, he, do do you want all through. nine million to call? Do you want yeah. all nine million to call? Yeah. She made it through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, the ratio. next message is from uh, Mobile, Alabama. Mm. Hey, Harvey, good morning. I am listening to your morning show out of Mobile, Alabama, and I am driving and I am dying laughing. If you said the guy that wouldn't take the 430 some thousand dollars per game, you said put the needle in my arm, I want to add to that, and you can even leave it in there. I don't even care. I'm out. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye. That's talking about Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving. He's missing $435,000 a game because he won't take that vaccine. Man, that lady said, I'll take that vaccine. You leave that needle in there. I won't even move it. <laughs> Run it down the court. And that's uh, Mobile, on. Alabama, one of another great station down there, 93 BLX, baby, off yeah. of Dolphin mm-hmm. Avenue. That's where it yeah. used to be. I don't know where it is. I'm there. Airport Boulevard used to perform down there. One of my favorite gigs was the Punchline on uh, Government Boulevard, right next to the Food World and the U-Haul. Well, thank you. Uh, If you want to leave a voicemail for Steve, 877-29-STEVE is the number. Coming up next, the sexy nephew with the prank phone call for today, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, she's way too comfortable. We'll get into that in just a bit, because right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? Thanksgiving is upon us. We all know it's around the corner. It's time to get ready. We got people coming in, family members. This right here is Thanksgiving with Cousin Benji. Ooh. Thanksgiving <laughs> with Cousin Benji. Cat dog, if you would. Hello? Hello, who is this? Miss Glenda, who is this? This Benji. I'm, I'm calling. Is, is, is Miss Purvis there? Um, no, she's not here right now, but this is her daughter. Um, is there a problem? Uh, no, this, this, this Benji. This Mama, uh, Mama Lois' nephew. Who, who oh. is this again? This Belinda. This you is, um... Mama, Mama Lois, Lois Mama Lois, Lois your ain't it, ain't it? Correct. Mama Lois and Miss Purvis' sister. Okay, I'm Benji. I'm, I'm, I'm her nephew from the other side of the family. You say your name what now? Glenda. Okay, what time y'all supposed to get in? Um, we should be there by the afternoon. Okay, uh, is is Miss Purvis? Is she? Is, is your mama making the, the 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 dressing? Yeah, she's making enough for about forty five people. Um, we actually, um, this was discussed about a month ago. Right, um, y'all on the y'all. We they had the um the conference call. The conference. The family had the conference call, right? Yes, sir. Okay, now listen. What the reason why they they got me to call? They wanted me to go in and call, and, and I was trying to get Miss Purvis. She not there? No, she's not here. What's wrong? Oh, uh, okay. They not gonna they not gonna need her to do the um to do the dress. And why wouldn't they need her to do the dress? She been making it for ten years. We just we just discussed this. So what do you mean? They they say that they got somebody down here that's gonna do the dress. Especially since y'all traveling, y'all ain't got to bring it, you know, uh, right. and be traveling with it. But they got somebody gonna do the dress. Okay. Well, first of all, who are you? You're you're Benji. What is your name? That was not my name, Benjamin, but they called me Benji. But, 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 uh, uh, like I say, uh, I'm on the other side of the family. I ain't on y'all's side. Okay, well, I'm still trying to figure out why the f- are you calling me? Because she's been making the dressing for 10 years, like I said. And, I mean, it's been discussed, so I don't even know why, why you're calling me. I don't even know you. Uh, okay, well, what I'm trying to explain to you just right here is that they got so y- y'all ain't got to worry with bringing the dressing. They got somebody going to bring, they got somebody <laughs> down here that's going to cook it, so... In other words, you know, if you can tell Miss Purvis, she ain't got to worry about the dressing this year. Oh, so you want me to tell my mama, after she's been making dressing for 10 years, that y'all say, you, y'all ain't worried about it. She shouldn't have to make it this year because we driving there. We drive every year. So I'm not going to do that to her. So, I mean, I don't, I don't even know who you are to be calling me anyway. Why isn't somebody calling me that I know regarding this? Okay, okay. You Glenda, right? I am Glenda. Uh, all right, listen. Let me say this, cause I I don't mind saying what what everybody thinking, but but most people don't want to say. Let me just say this right here. 
really what's going on is this right here. A lot of people in the family, you know, don't really don't don't really like Miss Purvis dress. Benji, Benjamin, who the f are you supposed to be? Let me explain something to you. My mama gonna make this person, you gonna eat that and we ain't bringing that on with us. So you can tell your family that I said that. Cause you understand me? No, I, I, I mean, I, I, but first of all, you got to understand that I'm bringing news that, that, that people done, done voted on and this is what everybody want to do. Don't nobody well, want Well, why didn't they call? We had a meeting. My mama make the person. She been making it 10 years. Ain't nobody been saying nothing. And guess what? When I'm up in the house, nobody better not be walking up and through there talking about my mama either. And y'all go eat the Okay, but see right there. Why, why, if people don't like the dressing, Glenda, why does you want to make su submit everybody to having to eat it if they don't like it? You don't eat. That's all I know. I don't know. You are calling me no. Well, I don't know no. Benjamin, Benji, whoever the hell you are. I'm Mama Lois' nephew from the other side of the family. Exactly. I don't know you. Okay, and, and, and really, really to, to back all that, I don't really know you. But I'm, but, but I'm, but I'm man enough. To, I'm man enough to call you and tell you what we gonna do and what we ain't gonna do. Well, I know one thing. I done said it once and I repeat it again. She gonna make that dressing. You gonna eat it and we gonna go on by that day. Okay, okay, right there. Listen, and I know this might be hard for you to understand. What you grew up with liking, everybody else might not like. You, you can say what you want to. I don't even remember your being in my way. So you might not like it because you ain't been around, but she making dressing. Now, first of all, when y'all get down here, it's going to already be some more dressing here. Okay, okay. And she going to make her dressing, and we going to sit down, and we all going to eat. And I'm not, it, 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 it's, it's not even going to be discussed no further than that. I said what I got to say because you're not going to hurt my mama's feelings. Okay, there ain't nobody trying. That's why I'm trying to tell you to tell her don't make it now so she don't even bring it down. We are we make it when we get there anyway. Hey, look, I'm finna say this here, because evidently you ain't really understanding what I'm saying to you. I'm going to say it as clear as I can say it. If y'all come down here with that dress, I promise you, we already got dressing made. We throwing that dressing in the trash so everybody can get the dressing that we made for them. Point blank. That's what we doing. Please, let me explain something to you. I'm going to be on dressing patrol, and if I find that you and threw my mama's dressing in the trash, it's going to be some and we're going to set that off. I'm not playing with you. This was too funny to me. Uncle Carl and Kilmer, we were all on this conference call. Ain't none of them bald enough to call us or tell this to bull. But now they're going to set your stupid up calling me. I don't even know your call. I guess they felt like you was a call, like you the baddest in the world. But Benji, Benjamin, I don't even know your rap. I'm telling you now. I'm not playing with you. I'm telling you, anybody hurt my mama feeling, it's going to be some in that And I'm telling you, all y'all going to be Y'all full of down now. But I'm coming. Y'all out one. Can I, say, can I say something else to you? I wish you would. Can I tell you what else they were saying? I mean, what? They wanted me to tell you this, Glenda. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your cousin, Sheila. Got me the prank phone call, you. Tommy, <laughs> you almost got the head. You about to make me set it off. What? <laughs> right, so that man, this Thanksgiving was, it wasn't going to be no Thanksgiving, baby. Because I was going to have my brother's what? Vengeance. <laughs> Y'all play too Uncle Carl, ain't Tilma, ain't nobody said nothing on the comments. Hey, she <laughs> was, I'm going to come up in there and set this blankety blank off. <laughs> she was this. I'm going to be on blankety blank dressing blank and blank patrol. Not dressing patrol, though. Jim. Oh, man. Dressing they patrol. You're stupid, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's she got man. tired of your stupid ass. Yeah. Glenda Since was your stupid not ass to talk to me. <laughs> I don't even know Benjamin, Benji, Bob, Focus. What is your name? Oh. This reminds me of my.
my mom because she oh, was she's nothing for our family. I love it, man. You know we ain't nobody had hurt our mama's feelings. No, boy. We no were, you're not finna hurt my mama's feelings. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Uh, if you don't like the dressing, you better swallow. I tell you what, <laughs> we gonna bring that dresser down there. And we ain't bringing none, none back home. Back. <laughs> we gonna make it, and y'all ends gonna eat it. <laughs> Man, I love it. I love it. See right there, right there. See now that right there. Why would we see? I'm gonna just say to see why. See things you grew up on liking might not be what I you boy. She was tired of your ass. <laughs> they sent your stupid behind Anybody with your stupid you. ass. <laughs> <laughs> Dayton, Ohio, I'm going to be more stupid Ohio. than this. <laughs> this weekend at the Dayton Convention Center. Tickets on sale. Nephew Tommy and Friends Comedy Show. You don't want to miss it. Tickets on sale right now. All right. Thank you, Nephew. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter. Subject, she's way too comfortable. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. This portion of the Steve Harvey Morning Show is brought to you by our good friends at Walmart Family Mobile. Stay a step ahead with Walmart Family Mobile with nationwide 5G coverage powered by T-Mobile. Plans start at less than 25 bucks a month. Walmart Family Mobile, stay a step ahead. 5G service requires 5G-capable device availability, coverage, and speed varies. All right? Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. If you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, Please submit your strawberry letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. You never know. It could be yours. You never know. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the strawberry letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, she's way too comfortable. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 29-year-old man, and I was dating an almost perfect woman until recently. We met at the wedding of one of my oldest friends, and my friend had lots of great things to say about her. That was seven months ago, and we were taking time to get to know each other. She's two years older than me and further along in her career than I am. But she's never made a big deal out of it. We started attending church together right away, and I've met her family and friends, and she's met my mother. My mother didn't have much to say about her, and that bothered me. A few weeks later, my mother called me and said my girlfriend has mannerisms of a trifling woman. She told me that my kitchen should have been clean and there should have been the basic things like an adequate amount of bottled water and liquid soap in the kitchen and both of my bathrooms. I didn't know what that meant until recently when I started leaving my girlfriend alone at my house when I go on work trips. I came home one day to find her dirty clothes in a pile on the floor of my closet, and she said she didn't know where else to put them. The bed looked like it hadn't been made up since I left, and she said she intended to wash the sheets before I came home. That's not the half of it, though. She now comes into the bathroom and uses the bathroom while I'm in the shower or brushing my teeth. She spent every night at my house since then, and whenever she goes back to her house, she brings more clothes to my guest room. My mother was right, and I wish I had paid more attention. I want to be with her, but she's too comfortable in taking over my home. How do I slow things down a bit and get her back into her own house? Hmm. Okay, I'm trying to assess what the, the problem is and, and what you really want and why, um, because... At the beginning of this letter, when you guys, you know, met and everything, and you didn't have an issue with this woman, you said she was almost perfect, almost perfect, until your mom stepped in and said she had trifling ways. Your mom had a small list of wrong things in your house that uh, she held your girlfriend accountable for, things like soap in the bathrooms, in the kitchen, no bottled water, and, and the, the messy kitchen, too. Um, I agree that if your girl is staying there, she should at least make sure she cleans up after herself. I have no problem with that, but it sounds like your girl is uh, thinking she's a guest. She's thinking of herself as a guest, not the woman of the house right now. I, you know what? I, I say don't be a mama's boy here. Have your own grown man conversation with your girlfriend and discuss these boundaries in the bathroom and stuff that you don't like, you know, meaning her staying at your house too much, all that. Just discuss everything with her. 
Uh, remember, you said you were taking time to get to know each other, and that's a process. And, and, and talking and communicating is all a major part of that. Uh, see how she receives this conversation, if she receives it negatively, positively, and then go from there. And by the way, have you been to her house? Uh, because you didn't mention that. Was her house clean? If it's a mess and you like it clean, then you guys have a real problem. Uh, the point is, you should handle this situation, not your mom. Steve? Nope. Uh, Shirley, I appreciate it. Uh, this young man has a different problem. <sighs> this boy right here, Lord. Moving too fast, boy. We're just moving too fast. 29-year-old guy, the title of the letter, she way too comfortable. Oh, boy, I, I, well, watch how I t- teach you something, son. 29-year-old man, I was dating an almost perfect woman. Key word, I was dating an almost perfect woman. There are none of them, son. There are none. There are no perfect men. There are no perfect relationships. There are no perfect people. When you thought that, you was only setting yourself up for the letdown. So let's go on and start. Met at the wedding of one of my oldest friends. My friends had a lot of great things to say about her. That was seven months ago. We were taking time to get to know each other. But watch this. She's two years older than me and further along in her career than I am, but she never made a big deal out of that. We started attending church together right away, and I've met her family and friends, and she's met my mother. My mother didn't have much to say about her, and that bothered me. A few weeks later, my mother called me and said, my girlfriend has mannerisms of a trifling woman. Oh, you got to, you just going to perk a man's ears back when her mama, when a man's mama make that assessment. It don't make you a mama's boy. It's just her assessment. Now, I could call this the mama just don't like and she hating. She overprotective. I could go there, but that's not the case. She called and said that after a few weeks. And then the reason she told us what I didn't agree with. She said the kitchen should have been clean and that should have been basic things like adequate amount of bottled water and liquid soap in the kitchen on both of my bathrooms. I ain't know what that meant. Me either, though. I don't either. So what it ain't no damn bottle of water in there? I got a big ass house and pay people and sometimes ain't no damn bottle of water in there. Heads will roll because of this, but that's neither here nor there. Okay. I got news for you. Hang on. We'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 minutes after. The subject of today's strawberry letter is she's way too comfortable. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject, she's way too comfortable. Well, let me. I'm, I'm going to teach you something about being a young man. So listen up. This is going to be good. You're a 29-year-old dude dating a woman a couple years old, and you, you met her at a wedding, and everything was going to go. Uh, she, you met her, and you thought she was an almost perfect woman, which was setting yourself up for this letter, because there are none of those out there, and there are no perfect men out there. So now that you was looking for near perfection, and you found out it ain't there, now you won't write into the radio show. So, well, here we go. But you wrote in Uncle Steve, so that's good, because I'm going to teach you something, man. Uh, she makes more money than you, never made a big deal out of it. Y'all immediately started attending church, and everybody, you met her family, she met your family. That thing that bothered you was your mother didn't have much to say about her. That bothered you, and I understand. But a couple weeks later, your mama called, and your mama said that your girlfriend has mannerisms of a trifling woman. Now, that perks a young man's ears back when his mother says that because he loves his mother. Most men are looking for their mama or traits like her in a woman. So when your mama say your girlfriend got mannerisms of a trifling woman, that's different. So, and uh, she told me that your kitchen should have been clean and it should have been basic things like adequate amount of bottled water and liquid soap in the kitchen and both of my bathrooms. I don't know what that meant. Well, me either, dog, to be honest with you. I don't either. Uh, you can come over to my house and not bring no damn bottled water. I can deal with that. You ain't got to put soap in the kitchen or the bathroom. Hell. Wipe your hands off. Run them under some water. Wipe your hands off. Come on back in here. But that's neither here nor there. And then he started figuring it out. When I started leaving my girlfriend alone in my house when I go on work trips, I came home one day to find dirty clothes in a pile on the floor in my closet. The girl told you she didn't know where else to put them. 
but the bed looked like it had been made up since I left. She said she intended to wash the sheets before I came home. And But that ain't the half of it. She now comes into the bathroom and uses the bathroom while I'm in the shower or brushing my teeth. Er, this where the letter took a turn. What was that sound? Er, that's a car <laughs> slamming on brakes. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> what? Hmm. I'm in here brushing my teeth. You using the toilet. I'm in the shower. You using the toilet. That ain't comfortable. You doing too much. I don't want to hear this while I'm in the bathroom. I don't want to see this side of you. We ain't that cool. She spent every night at my house since then, and whenever she goes back to her house, she brings more clothes to my guest room. She moving too fast, son. She trying to move in. You a good dude, man, and she see it. She see it, and she trying to get all her stuff over there and mark her territory. Y'all been spending every night together, but when she go home, she bring more clothes to your guest room because it ain't a guest room no more. You know why? Because you ain't finna have no more guests. Your guest room stands for guess who was the last person in there. <laughs> that, that's what your guest room is. Now, my mother was right, and I wish I had paid more attention. I want to be with her, but she's too comfortable in taking over my home. How do I slow things down a bit and get her back to her own house? Now, son, this is where I'm going to help you out. This is Uncle Steve talking to you. See, the problem is, young man, you don't know how to analyze your own feelings and situation. That's the problem you're having. Because you like her and you thought she was perfect, you're trying to work through a couple things. But some of these things that you're trying to work through, I don't think you're going to be able to tolerate this. A messy woman is hard to deal with, just like a messy man is hard to deal with. But I, for me, and you can call this sexist or whatever you want to, I can't date a, a sloppy woman. I can't do it. I can't, I can't do it. I cannot date a woman that, that don't keep herself up in the house. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm not that great when it comes to keeping things around the house clean. Now, both of us trifling. So now, I'm sorry. You can call that what you wanted. But my girl can't be trifling because I already know I'm semi-trifling when it comes to the house. See, right there. Mm -hmm. Right there. Now, you can say what you want to say about me, but I'm making a call. And it ain't her job to keep it clean. It really ain't. I understand that. It's a, it's a pitch in and do it both ways. I got all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do around here. I pitch in. I pitch in. I pay for somebody to do my part. That's how you pitch in. Yeah, that's how I pitch in. Man, you can do what you want to do, but I don't know how you're going to handle it. But just coming in this damn bathroom, I'm here trying to brush my teeth. That's what you ain't finna do. You don't finna pull your drawers down, leave around your ankles and be sitting there making sounds and noise. Really? I'm in here brushing my damn teeth. This is gonna stop right here. You got to go back home. Now you say, no, he not, no, that's what, what, what you think using the bathroom means. She ain't in there just peeing. Uh-uh, no. How do I slow things down a bit and get her back to her house? Dog, you don't know this, but you got to break up with this woman. Cause let me explain something to you. It's more of this. You just seeing the, you just get scratching the surface, dog. In seven months, if she using the bathroom in front of you, it's some more behind curtain number three. I promise you that, dog. You don't know how to analyze these feelings you have, and I break up with her. Uh, thank you. Post your. She not finna stop being trifling, dog. I break up with her. On today's strawberry letter. Your At Steve Harvey right. FM on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. <laughs> Check out Mother Right. Check out the Strawberry Letter Podcast on demand coming up at 46 minutes after the hour. Junior and sports talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In today's trending headlines, a lot going on in the world. First in the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse, the judge rips the media saying that he, he'll think long and hard about allowing televised trials in the future. Also, when he referred to jurors from a previous trial, he referred to the African-Americans as a black or the black. Hmm. I mean, come on, Judge. That sounds crazy, okay? I, that I sounds saw crazy. that. I heard that I mean, sound it like. sounds 
like the racist that this judicial system is and has yes. always been. He's a, a judge. And you're right. referring to blacks as the black. A black. Yeah. Unbelievable. One of the blacks. Yeah. But yes. they can't help it. Mm-hmm. And see, the problem is he's having with live uh, televised things is now people get to see what he been doing. Uh, yes, sir. In yes, court talk, behind Steve. closed doors. See, yes, that's what sir. the real problem is. Because now it ain't it ain't the media. It's you. See, yeah. see what happened with social media. It allowed us to take a peek behind the curtain because mm-hmm. they've had the curtain up for years. Mm-hmm. See mm-hmm. all of these, uh, uh, all these killings of blacks and all this here. I've seen this my entire. I'm 64. I've seen this my entire life. I kn- I've seen blacks get killed by the police in Cleveland. It don't even make the paper. Right. I saw it before. Exactly. So this ain't nothing new to me. But now the curtain is back, and they don't like that the curtain is back. That's right. Mm-hmm. You're right, That's Steve. Right. Also, That's in right. the Ahmad Arbery murder trial, we have two murder trials going on at the same time. Uh, the man Travis McMichael, who fatally shot. Ahmad Arbery describes a life or death encounter. Did you see? He had the gun. He had the gun. Yeah. You know, let, normally you don't see defendants take the stand, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Because it's self critical But they know they have to do a desperate measure because mm-hmm. this right here, they they taking the stand so he can try to create something. What this man said was, he grabbed my gun you and him if down. he had. If he had taken my gun, I feared for my life. That's their favorite thing. Wait a minute. First of all, why you got a gun? You chased this man down. He jogging. And then he had the nerve to say, because I assumed he was the guy that had been breaking in. Mm-hmm. A black dude mm-hmm. running down the street. Yeah. I said, man. Shock. You murder him on an that's assumption. That's your damn defense. Mm-hmm. You're a murderer. And a murderer. murderer. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Also in today's trending headlines, our condolences going out to the family of rapper Young Dolph. He was shot mm. and killed at a oh, cookery so bakery in Memphis yesterday. Um, our condolences definitely to his wife, his children. He was a beloved rapper. Wow. You know, I'm I'm gonna be honest. I don't I don't know much about him at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that's not my my lane. Uh, but the tragedy of it is, look, this this violence, man, it's 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 out of hand. It yes, is. it is. It's it is. Damn shame, kill this boy like this. All right, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at the top of the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. This family travel portion of the Steve Harvey Morning Show is brought to you by our good friends at Walmart Family Mobile. Stay a step ahead with Walmart Family Mobile with nationwide 5G coverage powered by T-Mobile. Plans start at less than 25 bucks a month. Walmart Family Mobile. Stay a step ahead. 5G service requires 5G capable device availability, coverage, and speed varies. Steve, we know, has been working very hard trying to plan a really nice trip for us during the holidays. We're so grateful. However, it's not done yet, but it could happen. Anyway, it's been a while since all of us have gotten together on the morning show and traveled together, okay? We, yeah. we always have fun wherever we go, Funny. but it's been a minute. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, Carla came up with these questions for the crew. Uh, <laughs> these Uh-oh. are good. If everyone on the, the morning show... Up. Come on. Uh-huh, if everyone on the morning show was at the airport, who would oh, get okay. pulled aside by TSA? Sure. Surely. <laughs> Yeah. Why me? I want to know. All that, all that you need to fly with and all this here. <laughs> you know, all, all this the medicine. Right. You got on. All <laughs> mask and <laughs> eye coverings. And, you know, I have anxiety. You know, yeah. Come on. Some man's anxiety. beeping. It's got metal all on it. <laughs> damn Bluetooth right. speakers trying to calm your nerves before you get on yes. this damn thing. I have anxiety. Yeah. Got a yeah. I'm not flying with them. Yeah. I'm not it's flying right. with them. I'm telling y'all that. Uh, tell high me, blood pressure here. cuff. Okay. She got, a she got a high blood pressure cuff taking her blood pressure. Don't. Sit, your ass, sit your ass down somewhere. What's the next question? Here we go. Who would take the longest in the security line? Tom. Shirley. No. Shirley uh-huh. again. It's Not Shirley. me. Yeah. Fly through. All this stuff, man. Tommy, Tommy be having a lot of stuff Tommy. when he flies. Yeah. Well, Tommy got the gadgets. Definitely Tommy. Pre- all these Clear. I'm everything. This is <laughs> I'm sliding right on through. <clears throat> all right. 
Who would be, which one of us would take his or her shoes off on the plane? Steve. Oh, I got to take my damn shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get these damn shoes off. I got, to, I got to get these damn shoes off. There. Anyway, in hell, I'm fly all that way over there on with your shoes on. Spread your toes out. I got, I got to open my, I got to separate them. You know, it's just very rare that, that like they spend star. time away from each other, but they enjoy the freedom sometimes. So I got to spread these toes out, let them not touch. Like, um, like I can't, like, if I spread my toes, like, wide as I can, like, yeah. The second and third toe have never been away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> the one next to the big toe and the one right next to that, that uh-huh. tallest toe, yeah, he right. has never been away from his friend. They've They're never twins. split. <laughs> yeah, dog. They damn near Siamese twins. <laughs> I damn did. They, I ain't other. never opened them up, but they might be webbed. They might not be able to separate. Not webbed, Steve. But that toe that's next to my big toe and the one uh-huh. next to it, they've never separated. Now, the baby toe them bit off on his own, and I had a, a manicure, a pedicure lady that had her whole fist around my big toe one time. I couldn't even breathe. I was hyperventilating. Heifer, if you don't get my toe out your hand like that, just hold it, just Foul they ever real put that hard. divider in there on your toe? They'll put that divider where it separate all of them. Well, Tommy, that's for if you're doing nail polish. Oh, that question oh, isn't be, on here. I'd be shellacked up. So yeah, see, I don't, I don't make polish my damn toes. <laughs> Jail. <laughs> all right, uh, who would get there way too early? Oh, Junior, that, Junior, because be <laughs> he's be scared. I'm, I'd be nervous. <laughs> who would get yeah, there late? Mississippi and Monica gonna get there way early. Oh, I'm getting there early, too. <laughs> Looking who's for gonna, coffee. Who's going to get there late? Late? late. Tommy. Probably me, because I ain't. Oh, I come oh, right yeah, for right. the door closed. I yeah. come right so for the door closed. Yeah. Tommy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to get I'll drunk see. before getting on the plane? Ooh. Tommy. Tommy. <laughs> It's June. Tommy. Tommy. The hell with you. He, 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 he going to get drunk uh, before he get on the plane, on the plane, as soon as he get off the plane. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll have more of today's trending stories coming up on the Steve Harvey Morning Show at 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. Y'all know the answer to that. All right, we'll have more of, of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Congratulations to 76-year-old prostitute Beatrice $3 Thompson. Uh, Beatrice what? has retired after a 54-year no. career. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm. She left over 500,000 customers satisfied, including four American presidents. Beatrice Three Dollar Thompson is nicknamed Three Dollar for the price of a sexual act when she started working in the sex industry. I no mean, wonder she, she had to work so long. The- <laughs> <laughs> Three dollars. I mean, damn. <laughs> Inflation didn't nothing take the price up. Nothing. You know, some people enjoy what they do. They love their jobs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. I mean, the Sex Workers Union of Nevada named her Sex Worker of the Year 17 times. Okay. Sex Ooh. Worker of the Century. Mm-hmm. Her old ass was 76. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. She got sex seven. Worker of the Year. Of the Year 17 times. And between, check this out, Steve, between 1969 and 1992, she was honored with her con- for her contribution to the profession with a Lifetime Achievement Award. And her very last customer was a 34-year-old man from Germany who made uh, a trip to see her, 5,400 miles. He wanted to see her and no one else. He said it was the best experience of his life. She has God-given skills and over 50 years <laughs> of experience. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Get an award. Please don't oh, bring the Lord the into Lord. this. No, no, you're not. <laughs> That's the worst damn story I ever heard. All right. Man. Take her old ass somewhere and sit your we'll ass We'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. For $3. Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now to play Would You Rather. Our, our round of Would You Rather goes like this. Um, hmm, for the guys, would you rather have people admire you for the good things that you do in life, or would you have rather have people respect you for your power? Hey. So you want to be a good person, uh, or you want to be a powerful person, hey. basically? Hey. Would you rather? Power. Say Powers it again, Shirley. Okay. Would you rather have people admire you for your good deeds or would you rather people respect you for your power? 
All due respect. I'm gonna go with eight. That's what I do. Anyway. You you want to be admired or respect? Yeah, I'll just be admired. Yeah, because that's what Would I'm doing. Would you say, now. Junior? I'd rather be admired because that's what I'm doing now. I'm doing eight at currently. <laughs> 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 I don't know. That's Come on, a weird Nef, what you say? R E S P E C T. You want people to respect you for your power. I ain't really got no damn power. <laughs> <laughs> so, why do you choose B D for? <laughs> I guess I'm hoping for the power. You know what I'm saying? I really ain't got no power. <laughs> Tommy, 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 you want to see what that feel like? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but at least he came to his own conclusion. Oh, <laughs> we didn't have to help him out. Well, what I about just, you, Steve? It's hard because I've I've felt both of those things, you know. Mm-hmm. But I think Admiration it's more important to be admired for the good things that you do. Mm-hmm. That's probably the most important. Uh, respect of power. I don't I don't like having to flex that. I don't. Because you, know? you have power. Um, limited in certain areas, Mm -hmm. you know, but any, you know, and yeah, anytime you're in a position of authoritative position Mm -hmm. that gives you a certain amount of power, but you got to be careful with it. You have to be very, very careful with it. There's nothing you should, I'd I'd rather be liked for the, for good things that I do. All right, here's another one. Would you rather live to be 100 years old and you're out, or would you rather live to be 500 years old, like they used to be in the Bible and stuff? 100. 100 or 500? 100. 100. 100. I, can't I ain't going to know nobody. <laughs> yeah, we just walk <laughs> around talking. To, we Ain't nobody to talk to. Yeah. My no, last it's... friend died 497 years ago. What the hell am I be doing out <laughs> <laughs> ain't, ain't nobody gonna want to talk to me, boy. I remember when they had they ain't had nothing but cell phones. <laughs> y'all just y'all flying, flying around in all these cars and everything right here. Do you know? Do you know we actually walk somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Coming up, in, thank you guys. Coming up in 49 minutes after the hour, it is our last break of the day, and we'll get some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are, our last break of the day on this Thursday. Thursday. Yes. <laughs> one week it's been away. A good day. Mm-hmm. One week Ooh, away. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Wow. From dressing. Yeah. Wow. Great. One next week. Ghibli. Next Thursday. Every year Brand we say this. Sauce. You know, I'm eating a keto diet right now, you know, oh, are you? keto eating program. Okay. Uh-huh. And uh, my wife asked me, says, so how do you want me to do Thanksgiving for you? I said, like I've been doing it for the other 63. <laughs> <laughs> On this day. Don't yeah. change. <laughs> yeah, we're not changing nothing. Damn the keto. Yeah. Yeah. My ass Thursday. is fitting to go out of ketosis is all I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. All right, before we get to your closing remarks, Steve, uh, we want to let the people know that the Steve Harvey Morning Show is back again with our annual turkey giveaway. Yes. This year's Steve Harvey Morning Show turkey giveaway is happening on Monday, November 22nd, and Tuesday, November 23rd. It's an honor and a privilege from all of us here at the Steve Harvey Morning Show to help those less fortunate. Uh, So please listen to this station for more details. The Steve Harvey Morning Show Turkey Giveaway is sponsored by our good friends at Walmart Family Mobile. Stay a step ahead with Walmart Family Mobile with nationwide 5G coverage powered by T-Mobile. Plans start at less than 25 bucks a month. Walmart Family Mobile, stay a step ahead. 5G service requires 5G-capable device availability. Coverage and speed varies. Thank you and happy Thanksgiving. You know what, Steve? We have so much to be thankful for. We really, really do. Man. Yes, we do. I mean, Very I mean just to you know, yes. just to be here every day, mm-hmm. be alive. Just I think. Through. I think sometimes uh, we, as human beings, have a tendency to lose sight of what we have to be thankful for mm-hmm. because we are always on the hunt and the quest for something new, something more, something bigger, something better. And in our quest to get more, we oftentimes forget. And when I got through, 
I realized that I had the crown, so I got grateful. And I realized I had a lot on my plate, and I got grateful. So instead of worrying about what you ain't got, how about praising God for what you do got? How that sound? Sound like a winner to me. Y'all have a great day, man. Uh, 